Hello friends and welcome back to Play Recap. Today we will look at Mystic River, a mystery thriller movie that was released in 2003. As always, spoilers ahead. At the start of the movie, three childhood friends named Jimmy, Sean, and Dave are playing in the streets of a Boston neighborhood. Jimmy tells the two to write their names in the wet cement on the sidewalk. Jimmy starts by writing his name, and then the other two kids do the same. But as Dave is writing his name, a strange man pretending to be a police officer stops him. The creepy man tells them to stop and asks where they live. When he finds out that Dave doesn't live nearby, he makes Dave get in the car. Dave gets in the car out of fear. Inside, an older man turns around and smiles at Dave. We see a ring on his finger, and this suggests he may be a priest. After that, the creepy man and the priest drive off with Dave while Jimmy and Sean, who are confused, watch them take their friend who can't help himself. The creepy man and the priest lock Dave in the cellar and molest him for days. After being held captive for days, Dave gets away from his captors and is able to go home. After a long time, Jimmy, Sean, and Dave are all grown up and have their own lives, so they are not as close as they used to be. Dave has a son and a wife, so he already has a family. Dave still seems to be affected by the trauma he went through as a child, which makes him less stable mentally. In the meantime, Jimmy turns into a thug, but he soon changes for Katie, his daughter from his first wife, who died. He is now married to his second wife and has two young daughters with her. On the other side, Sean gets married and becomes a detective. He is always getting calls from his wife, who lives far away with her baby right now. Strangely, she doesn't say anything at all when those calls come in. On a Saturday, Katie tells her father that she is going out with her friends later that night. Then, Jimmy lets her. Katie looks at Jimmy as she is about to leave and tells him she will see him later. When Katie gets in her car, her secret boyfriend, Brendan, surprises her. After they kiss, he asks her if they will continue their plans for tomorrow. That night, Katie and her friends go to a bar and have fun dancing and drinking. Dave, who is drinking in the bar at the same time, recognizes Katie. Midnight comes, and Dave goes home at 3 a.m., full of blood and with cuts on his hands and stomach. He won't go to the hospital when his wife asks him to. He tells her that a thief tried to attack him, and that's how he got hurt. He looks scared because he thinks he might have killed the robber. But when Dave's wife checks the newspaper the next day, she doesn't find anything about the dead thief. Suddenly, a boy tells the 911 operator that a car full of blood is on the street. They ask the boy what his name is, but he won't tell them. At the same time, Katie still hasn't come home. Jimmy comes to the store and calls her friend's dad when he hears this. But her dad says she isn't there. Brendan and his brother then go to the store to look for Katie. So Jimmy, who seems to dislike Brendan and his brother who can't talk, says in a cold voice that she's going to her sister's communion. After that, Jimmy and his wife go to his other daughter's communion. In the meantime, Sean and his partner come to look into the bloody car. It turns out that the car belongs to Katie, but Katie can't be found anywhere. Sean thinks that the suspect shot her in the shoulder and based on what he saw, she ran to the grass field. So they go there to look for Katie and quickly find her dead body. Jimmy is worried about his daughter and is in church when he sees police cars driving through the streets. Then he follows them until he gets to the scene of the crime. When Jimmy sees Katie's car there, he gets very worried. He asks Sean whether Katie has died already. At this point, he gets angry and sad because Sean can't answer his questions, which means Katie is already dead. After that, Jimmy goes to the police station to find out if Katie's body is the one that was found. After making sure of it, Sean and his partner ask Jimmy for more information that could help them solve the case. The partner writes it down and also remembers that Jimmy was in prison for robbery 16 years ago. The next day, people come to Jimmy's house to share their grief with his family. There are also Dave and his wife. Dave's wife keeps looking worried at him. She seems to think that Dave killed Katie because he came home last night covered in blood, which was the same time that Katie was killed. The partner then tells the chief of police that they found some pamphlets for Las Vegas hotels in Katie's bag. The detective then asks an old woman who lives close to the crime scene if she saw anything last night. The old woman says that she heard a woman say hi, and then a gunshot last night. The partner then thinks Katie might know who did it. The detectives ask Katie's friend about the goodbye party they had last night and the Vegas pamphlets to find out more. The friends then say that Katie and her secret boyfriend plan to leave that day and start a new life in Vegas. This helps the police find Brendan. After that, Jimmy goes to Dave's house. He sees that Dave is hurt. He asks Dave about it. Dave says that he hurt himself on the door. 
Then, Jimmy says how sad he is that Katie died so suddenly. He thinks he shouldn't cry because he's a man, but he starts to cry anyway. While this is going on, the detectives are questioning Brendan about their plan to go to Vegas. When Brendan finds out that Katie has already died, he gets sad and confirms that they are still going to Vegas on Sunday. The last question that the detective asks Brendan is where he was when Katie was killed. He says he's sleeping. The detectives then ask Brendan to take a polygraph test with them, and he agrees. That night, Sean's wife calls him, but she still doesn't want to talk. He then says that he is tired of his job because he puts murderers in jail, but the people they killed stay dead. The next day, the detectives find out how Brendan did on the polygraph test, and he passed. So the detectives look at the people who are in the bar on Saturday night for another clue. They find Dave's name and go see him to ask him questions. The detectives notice that he has hurt his hand. Then they ask him if he has noticed anything out of the ordinary in the bar. Dave says that there is nothing unusual going on in the bar that night. As the last question, the detectives want to know where Dave was when Katie died. Dave then lied and said that he got home at 1 a.m. The detectives talk about the case after that. The partner then suggests that they check out Dave because Katie knows him. He was in the bar that night, and Dave has hand injuries. In the meantime, Jimmy promises to his dead daughter that he will find the murderer before the police do so that he can kill the murderer. The next day, the detectives go to Jimmy's house and meet Dave there. Dave's partner asks him where he got his wounds. Dave says it came from the garbage disposal, but his partner doesn't believe him. Then, Sean asks Dave's wife what time Dave got home on Saturday night but she tells him she is asleep that night, which is a lie. The wife then walks away right away, looking upset. In order to find out more, the detectives ask Jimmy why he hates Brendan. In response, Jimmy says that he hates just Ray, Brendan's father, because he left his family. So he thinks Brendan would be just like his father. After that, the detectives go back to the main office, where they finally get the ballistic report. The gun that was used to kill Katie was also used to rob a liquor store years ago, according to the report. No one was charged with the crime, though. So the police ask the owner of the liquor store about the theft. The store owner tells them that he thinks just Ray, who used to work for him, robbed the store. This means that Brendan's father, just Ray, owned the gun that Katie used to kill herself. After that, the detectives have a fight. Sean wants to look into Brendan again, but his partner says that Dave is still the main suspect because guns are easy to share, so Dave could have gotten it. Dave is watching a movie about vampires when his wife comes home late at night. He asks her about her background. She then gives a vague answer about how she just thinks about things by herself. Dave comes up to her all of a sudden angry. He asks her whether or not she thinks he killed Katie. She then asks Dave why he can't just tell the police about the thief so he can clear his name about Katie's death. Dave has a sudden outburst and starts crying as he tells his wife about a terrible thing that happened to him as a child. Then he says that his real self died when his kidnapper raped him, and that he is now like a vampire who keeps walking around even though he is dead. After that, he says he can no longer trust his mind and goes outside for a walk. The wife, on the other hand, is completely scared and confused by Dave's actions. When Dave goes outside to take a walk, he runs into Jimmy. Then he tells Jimmy that he had seen Katie in the bar before she died. The next day, the partner tells Sean that when he checked out Dave's car, he saw blood on it. He found type B blood on the seat, which is the same as Dave's blood type, and type O blood in the trunk, which is the same as Katie's blood type. Then they question Dave, but he doesn't tell them anything. It turns out that Dave didn't have his car with him last night and that it was reported missing. Then Sean tells his partner that they need to focus on just Ray's gun, so his partner has no choice but to let Dave go. Then they look at just Ray's record and see that he has been in trouble with the law with Jimmy. They'd also find out that he was arrested for stealing, but he doesn't end up in jail. So, they go to the police officer who arrested Just Ray to ask him about it. The officer then tells Just Ray that he told on Jimmy, so Jimmy goes to jail instead of Just Ray. Just Ray goes missing after Jimmy gets out of jail, which suggests that Jimmy gets even with Just Ray. At the same time, Jimmy and his thug friends show up at their house, where Dave's wife is waiting outside. She tells Jimmy that she broke up with Dave because he was acting strangely. After that, she tells him with tears in her eyes that Dave went home full of blood and that Katie was killed at midnight. Jimmy then asks Dave what he said, so Dave's wife tells Jimmy that Dave said he killed the robber, but there is no news about the robber. Jimmy then asks her in a serious way if she thinks her husband killed Katie, 
and she says that she does. The detectives ask Brendan about his father at the police station. Then Brendan says that he hasn't talked to his father since he went out for a drink and never came back. But Brendan and his mother don't think just Ray is missing because every month he sent them $500. Sean then asks Brendan about his dad's gun and tells him that Katie was killed with his dad's gun. Brendan says he didn't see his dad with a gun, which makes Sean angry. Since they haven't heard anything from Brendan, Sean listens to the 911 tape. From this, they learn that the boy who called 911 about the car knew the victim was a girl, even though the body was in the park. This makes it sound like the boy might have killed Katie. In the meantime, the thug friends pick up Dave on the street and ask him to join them in the bar for a drink. They start drinking when they get to the bar, and Jimmy soon joins them. When night comes, Dave gets drunk and goes outside to vomit by the Mystic River. Jimmy and the rest of his gang follow him. Jimmy tells Dave about his old friend just Ray, who told on him and went to jail while his wife was dying of cancer. He then says that he killed just Ray in that river and throws the body there. At that moment, Dave realizes that Jimmy thinks he killed Katie, so he nervously tells Jimmy that he killed a man who was molesting a boy, but not Katie. But Jimmy thinks he's lying because his story doesn't make sense and no body of a child molester has been found. Then, Jimmy makes him say that he killed Katie, and he does. When Jimmy asks why, Dave says that Katie reminds him of the youth he never had and that Jimmy will understand what he means if Jimmy gets into the kidnapper's car instead of him in that accident when they were kids. Then Jimmy stabs him and then shoots him in the head, killing him. Brendan checks on his father's gun and finds that it is gone. He finally figures out that his brother and his friend took their father's gun and killed Katie. Brendan thinks that his brother doesn't want him to leave with Katie. Then the Brendan beats the friend badly by punching and kicking him in the face. As Brendan goes to talk to his brother, their friend points the gun their father gave them. Lucky for them, the detectives show up and take control of the chaos. The next day, when Sean drives by, Jimmy is drunk from drinking on the street. Sean tells him that they finally caught the killers, who turned out to be Kid's brother and his friend, who had already confessed. Then, Sean tells Jimmy that the kids were just playing with the gun when they accidentally shot Katie. Then the kids kill Katie so she won't tell anyone about what they did wrong. When Jimmy finds out this, he is shocked to the core because he already killed Dave because he thought Dave was the one who killed his daughter. Sean suddenly asks Jimmy about Dave because the police are looking for Dave because they found the dead body of a child molester behind the bar. This also proves that Dave is being honest. Sean asks him when he's seen Dave the last time. He then says that the last time he saw Dave was when the people who took him were in the car. Sean asks him what he did to Dave after that. Jimmy thanks Sean for finding the killer, but he wishes Sean had done it a little faster. At this point, Sean knows that Jimmy must have killed Dave, so he asks Jimmy if he is going to send $500 a month to Dave's family, like he did after he killed Kid's father. Then, Sean and Jimmy went their separate ways. Sean gets a call from his wife out of the blue. This time, Sean says he's sorry, and his wife finally talks to him and says she wants to get back together. The movie ends with Sean finally seeing his family again at the Boston Parade. Dave's wife wanders around aimlessly in the parade, trying to find her son. However, her son won't talk to her, because his father is still not home. In the meantime, Jimmy's wife comforts him by telling him that he did what a father needs to do so they go outside to watch the parade. Jimmy sees Sean on the other side of the street, and Sean shows him a gun hand to let him know he's coming after him. In the end, all three names are still written on the sidewalk, but Dave's name is only partially written.